All righty, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone, thanks for joining. Um, really excited to talk to you today about how our customers are leveraging Retool beyond just internal use cases. And I'm also just really excited to have Matsu, co-founder of Greenly here with us to talk about how they use Retool to move faster as a business. So let's get into it. Today we'll be going over quick introductions, an overview of Retool, talk about Retool Embed, which is a new product that we just launched in private beta, and then I'll leave it up to Mathieu to talk about how Greenly builds internal and customer facing tools in Retool. And then of course, we'll leave it up to the audience for some Q&A. Great. So my name is Anthony. I'm a product manager here at Retool. I work on external facing initiatives, uh, recently helping out with the Retool Embed launch. Uh, pass it off to Mathieu. Yeah, I'm Matt, uh, one of the co-founder uh, and CEO of, of Greenly. Uh, and I'll detail a bit more about Greenly uh, afterwards. Uh, but very happy to be there and a huge fan of, 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 of Retool. So uh, super happy to share our experience uh, today. Awesome. Thanks, Mathieu. So a quick background on Retool. Um, we started off as a platform for building highly custom internal front ends. So think admin panels, back office dashboards, and internal tools. And we give you a drag and drop app builder with over 90 pre-built components, 40 plus connectors to hook into existing data, and the ability to customize your app's business logic with JavaScript, SQL, and CSS if you'd like for styling customization. So over the last year, we've moved down now deeper into the stack with workflows, which let you automate business processes with cron jobs, ETL tasks, and Retool DB. So providing a storage layer out of the box for Retool applications, workflows, and this really allows you to build full stack end-to-end -end software solutions for both internal and external end users. And so Retool Embed is a part of this. And I'll talk about how it fits more into the picture. The idea here is that you, know, you have everything kind of out of the box in Retool and all the tedious parts of software development, state management, UI development, having a bunch of people in the room when developing software, um, that all is made much faster with Retool. So we've had strong interest from customers in taking Retool's speed of development and making it part of their product strategy. And Retool Embed lets you do just that, it lets you take the Retool apps that you've built in a fraction of the time than using traditional software methods and embed those applications straight into your product. So you might have an existing way of authenticating your users into a web app um, or portal. With Retool Embed, you can seamlessly auth those users into those embedded applications. So taking kind of everything that already exists in Retool but now making a part of your product. And so to match your product's look and feel, we also give you the ability to write custom CSS, import fonts, theme your applications, and kind of make sure that the look and feel matches um, how your product behaves. And so with it, our customers have built onboarding flows, product configuration screens, um, and partner portals in months faster than using React. Um, and this is kind of all part of this idea that you, know, you can move much faster and deliver results to your business and without needing to wrangle UIs and things like that. So we'll quickly kind of pass it over to Mathieu to dive into how Greenly hits its goals faster using Retool. Matsu, do you want to? Yeah, can you hear me? I think I lost you a second, but ah. I just changed my network, so I should be good now, right? Got it, cool. I'll reshare my screen here really quickly. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. And, and you know, while you're, you're loading the slide, so, um, so Greenly, uh, we're a carbon management platform, one of the leading uh, carbon management platform. Uh, so we do everything around quantitative carbon, you know, measuring quantitative carbon, reducing it, helping our customers report it, communicate uh, around it. Um, we, uh, I think if you go to, uh, to uh, next slides, Anthony. So, you know, wh what is carbon management about? I, I already described it a bit, but one of, one of the big pieces of, of carbon management is obviously the measure. Uh, so how to collect the data to be able to measure the emissions of one specific customer. And this experience is very sector specific uh, because your carbon emissions will be different if you're a finance company than from your tech, uh, if you're a tech company. 
there is a big piece in the application about engaging your staff. So how to train uh, your staff and your employees around these topics. Uh, and then there is a big piece around reduction uh, because the, 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 you know, the full point of measuring the emission is to be able to reduce them in the end. Uh, and so how you can compute action plans, see the impact of action plans, both on the emissions and on, on your margin, on your costs, uh, engage your suppliers, which are a big part of your emissions and offset. Uh, maybe just a few figures on next slide on on Greenly itself. So, on the on the on the size of the company. So today we we're, we're one of the of the leading platform for carbon management. We support more than uh, 800 customers in you know across very different sectors. Um, we have about 150 uh, employees. You know among them, and I think it's interesting uh, for a discussion just afterwards. But among one third of them are uh, supporting our customers. Uh, they are climate experts, uh, expert, you know, in decarbonation and in measuring the emissions that are supporting our customers. But one third uh, is a technical team. Uh, so uh, a mix of developers, product builders, product managers and designers. Uh, and about a third are sales and marketing. Uh, we operate in three different geographies mostly, but um, more uh, if, you, if you count the long tail, but mostly US, UK, France. Um, and uh, without further ado, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to switch, you know, to our, 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 our usage of, of Retool. Maybe just uh, a few preliminary thoughts before I, I, I share the, uh, the different, um, the, the, the use that we, you know, we, we, we do, uh, how we use Retool uh, at Greenly. So the first thing I would say, and I think that's the very interesting piece today, uh, is that we're using uh, Retool massively for internal purposes. So that's one thing, and that you know that's the the, the usage that you might have already seen from uh, from Retool. You you might already uh, uh, be using you know Retool for, for this uh, this specific use case. But we also have a massive uh, use of Retool for customer facing apps. We actually have a, a full part of the of the SaaS uh, that we uh, we offer to our customers that that which which are you know uh, Retool apps. So I'll demo this just to, to show you what you know you can build uh, you, you, using Retool, uh, and, and you know just maybe in terms of our mindset when we we discovered uh, Retool at first, and I, I'll just uh, you know afterwards also give examples uh, while I go through the apps. I think w when you're um, when you're seeing an internal need or even a, an external need, you often have uh, two two roads when you know when you don't have a, a tool like Retool uh, at hand, uh, you have uh, let's say, you know, you, uh, I'll give an example that I'm going to show just afterwards, but, you know, let's say you have a need uh, uh, of, uh, you know, the sales team to, uh, to compute, you know, pricing for quotes or something like that. You all, you know, often have two roads that uh, are, are in front of you. You can either, you know, choose the uh, quick road of building some Google Sheets, uh, uh, you know, having a quick tool to be able to transfer this, or either you can go the full, uh, uh, I would say product road where you involve a product manager, product designer, a development team, and then, you know, you go uh, over uh, different iterations. And I think what, what that solved for us is that for a few topics uh, and more and more topics, uh, how do we shorten this feed at loop and how do we offer an intermediary options to be able to build very fast uh, some tools in a very efficient manner and even put this tool you know, within the hands of engineers that are not necessarily developers to be able to, to build tools very quickly uh, and, and you know, de decrease also the number of intermediaries between an idea uh, and the development of an application. Now, all, all that you know, needs, uh, let, let's make it all, uh, make all that concrete, right? With some, uh, some examples. I'll start with, you know, classic example that you might have uh, on, your, uh, on, your, on your side, which is, Typically, you know, a classic example that you have is you want to offer, and let me share my screen at the same time. Um, okay, perfect. So, you know, a, a classic, and, and I'll start with internal, you know, internal apps, internal tooling that we have, and I'll go, you know, uh, uh, more and more towards maybe more uh, rare usage of every tool. So, you know, for, first, um, I would say classic use case is that you have, uh, um, entities and 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 uh, that you are uh, or your knowledge base within you know your, your SaaS that you want to allow people internally to manage, um, and and for that you know it's it's one of the first uh, and foremost use case of Retool. What Retool allows you to to do uh, you know in, maybe in comparison with other tools that are just simply you know a role layer on top of a database 
is that you know it will allow you to build super quickly uh, these tools by adding all the filters that make it easy to manipulate this data. So you know in that example, this is an, uh, an app where we manipulate the emission factors of uh, our app. So you know an emission factor is basically the conversion uh, to CO2 of a specific activity. So that means, you know, uh, here, for example, we have a, a storage equipment. So we have an emission factor that converts, you know, the purchase of, of uh, storage equipment into CO2. So you want to uh, basically make it possible for, you know, our own climate experts, supporting clients to administrate, uh, to browse, to um, add, you know, to filter, to edit all these emission factors. And that's typically the type of app, you know, where, uh, okay, let's see uh, what type of, you know, emission factors I have on, uh, you know, uh, threat, for example, you know, and that's typically the type of, of uh, application that you'll be able to, to build super quickly. Um, and, and, you know, really the interest here, I think, compared to some of the tools that you might know, is that you have the capacity, you know, on, in all these applications, the devil is in the details. And I think what Retool allows us to do is to adjust very fast on what were the important details for that type of apps. You know, for example, let me give you an example. These filters, you know, you might have, you know, uh, you can see it below, right? We, you, you might have a lot of columns for your different entities. Well, you will only put the filters that make sense. Uh, here, you will adjust the flow uh, to put the, the most important filters on top or, or below and, you know, with the feedback of your team. And actually, you know, I, I was going to say with the feedback of your team, you adjust the app. Actually, it's directly our team adjusting the app, right? So it's exactly directly our climate experts who are engineers uh, adjusting this app. Now, if I switch to another example to show you how we support. So we have also a team, internal team that support all our other teams using Retool. I'll just show you a classic example that I mean probably could be uh, valid and relevant for all uh, for all um, uh, you know companies. Is that a typical uh, problem that might arise um, uh, in your uh, uh, in your company? Is that you know pricing? Uh, if you have different type of, of customers in different sectors, pricing might become super complex. Uh, so how to price you know the different products uh, for the different type of customers. And so we, we're uh, using HubSpot, right, uh, uh, as a CRM. And so the, the problem that we had is that we found that the HubSpot, you know, quote generation tool was limited when, you know, products start to become complex and there are different edge cases, corner cases, etc. But at the same time, obviously, it's super important to be reactive, you know, when you want to send a quote. And so you don't want to have, you know, some sort of super complex process where, you know, salespeople need to go through, uh, uh, you know, five pages process to, to build a quote. And so it, it's another example where, you know, Retool really solved it for us, where, you know, we were able to put uh, an engineer in building, uh, let's say, you know, we are building a new quote uh, for that. So we're selecting. And so, you know, we're also asking for, uh, okay, you know, the, uh, the also the administrative stuff. Uh, so, you know, we're sure that it's, it's, it's filled in in the right way. And then I can say, for example, we have a case where, you know, number of entities is important for pricing in our case. Uh, so, okay, do you want the detailed emissions uh, for each entity, which has an impact? And then when I start, you know, uh, uh, building basically the different uh, information, uh, it starts to uh, influence my pricing. Uh, and then I can add different options. Uh, and this will also, you know, uh, change uh, my pricing. And you can put all your different uh, option. And this is really, you know, uh, I think the first version was built in uh, half a day. Uh, and, you know, obviously we iterated on, on, on that. And But th that's typically the example where uh, we could uh, put, you know, uh, what we call product builder on our side in front of a, a, a salesperson. Uh, and then, you know, go through the need and, and centralize all the role and then build this, this experience for our uh, salespeople. And just to show you, you know, at the end, uh, you know, again, going back to, you know, what, what choice do you have if you want to conduct that type of project internally uh, today? Uh, probably you can go to your, uh, you know, I mentioned second option. Uh, you can go to your product team, uh, really do, you know, full discovery, maybe involve product manager, product designer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that might be, you know, a, a longer project. You could also build it in uh, an Excel sheet, you know, with a few rules and, and computing them. The interest of that, you know, 
um, you get with ritual, you get out of the box, you get roles, you get the connection. You know, here you can auto generate the quote, which is in HubSpot auto, which can be signed automatically. So you get all the connection to the APIs, you get the, the role setting, you get all the audit trail. Uh, so you get all the things out of the box that make that, you know, an app is really sustainable long term, that can be managed, uh, you can have maintenance, etc. Uh, so, so that's really, you know, where I, I would say it stands between the two, two classic options when you have that type of problems. Now, uh, so... Continuing on my journey on, on you know, we, so, so we were at that stage building a lot of internal apps and then we realized that, you know, we, we, really building these apps, we were wondering why not doing it for our customers to say. Uh, and the reason why is that carbon management is, is something that is super sector specific. I mentioned it. So uh, if you need to compute the emissions of a, of a tech company, which is going to be uh, mainly cloud, uh, for example, cloud emissions, uh, IT uh, inventory. It's going to be super different than from an industrial company where, you know, uh, uh, it's going to be, for example, the purchase of raw materials, et cetera. So what, and, and so we had these six super sector specific needs, but we didn't have the right uh, feedback loop between, you know, the idea from the climate expert engineers supporting customers and, you know, the engineering team that was, uh, they, the feedback loop was too long to build these sector specific uh, uh, apps. And so Ritual kind of solved uh, this problem for us because we were able to build a solid backend you know, layer on top of which we built customer facing apps, which we were able to iterate super fast on to build sector specific variations of the same app. Now, if I show you what that means concretely uh, in our own application, so let me share a bit. So what you can see is part of our uh, customer facing uh, experience uh, for, 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 so for our customers. Uh, so it's a carbon management platform, right? It helps you uh, build your GHG report. You can see it's one of the goals uh, or, or you know, compute, your, uh, um, compute and, and reach your net zero contributor certification. And everything that you can see here and that I'm going to show you are just uh, 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 go through uh, uh, quickly, but is a Ritual app. So, you know, all that is uh, is a Ritual app that we can develop, release, version, uh, maintain. So we are on Ritual on-premise. It's a full SSO with our uh, Auth0 layer. Um, but so all these are Ritual apps. It's not, uh, you know, a native uh, React that we had, we had before. So to give you an example of, of you know, a, a, an app that we're, uh, uh, you know, building, uh, using Ritual. So this is, for example, the, the part where customers are, um, you know, adding their building information. Uh, so, you know, building, uh, it's part of scope two emissions. So it's, uh, it's uh, your emissions linked to electricity consumption. Uh, it's linked to um, uh, your heating. Uh, and so you need to be able for, uh, you know, you need to allow your customers to add their, their building information. So, and this is exactly what, you know, Ritual does great, right? A lot of probably um, a lot of, of you know the SaaS around the table today uh, are building uh, applications also that are uh, managing data uh, where you need people to enter the data in a certain way, and that's what you know uh, is really easily done through Ritual Lab. So, for example, here we have a case so you can enter the different information about your uh, building, country, city, uh, the you know the building type, surface. Uh, you know, connect, you know, if you want to connect your utility directly, you can connect your utility, enter, you know, your uh, yearly electricity consumption, uh, etc. So all that, so this is an example of, a, of, a, of an app. If I give you another example, which is interesting. Uh, so within, you know, the, the, the uh, within, you know, the uh, process of uh, uh, doing your carbon accounting, you're collecting uh, your financial data. Uh, and so, uh, so why is that? You know, why are you collecting the financial data? Because you have what, what's called scope three, which is purchase of goods and services, which is the analysis of all uh, your uh, supplier expenses uh, and you, the, the conversion of it into CO2. So obviously uh, uh, it can be done through spend or it can be done through, let's say, you know, if, you, if you're buying some freight, uh, you know, some, uh, some uh, truck freight or some train freight, 
you can either analyze it through your dollar spent or through the tons per kilometer or per mile traveled. Uh, but often, you know, the, the, the dollar spent is the first good analysis. So what, so, and, and again, this is a full uh, retool app, right? Um, so here, for example, what we're doing is, so we have integrations with a lot of counting software. And what we're doing here is the algorithm goes through all the transactions uh, of the company. Uh, it categorizes it, so it puts a category in front of it. So, you know, ads, uh, cloud servers, uh, IT maintenance, etc. And then it put a coefficient uh, that converts the amount into CO2. What, you know, the app allows you to do is to recategorize the transaction. So, you know, if, if the algorithm didn't set the right category, you can recategorize and say, you know, I want to set, uh, you know, I don't know, some other, uh, some other, let's say, you know, it's plastic, this transaction, I can recategorize into plastic. Um, it also allows you to, uh, you know, have a first analysis, and I'll show afterwards in the SAS what we have, but a first analysis of your emissions per category. And you can also have a full audit trail of your categories by you know, this validation uh, component. So that, that's an example where, you know, what, what also having this app on Retool, uh, it allowed us to iterate super fast on, you know, what's the right flow for uh, the customers to uh, validate their transaction, uh, categorize it, etc. Now, to give you another, a few other examples of, of you know apps that we have built. So, if I go, so for example, we we are also you know using it in in combination with uh, other uh, embedded tools. I just show, for example, so we have an analytics part. So this is you know the analytics. Uh, tab of, 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 the, of, the, of the platform. So again, you know, this is a retool app in which we embed all the dashboards. Um, and, uh, and here, you know, the, the, the advantage of, um, of, of using, using uh, retool to build this was to be able to uh, uh, very quickly personalize the dashboards per sector and have, you know, very, uh, very easy um, uh, logic to be able to show and, and display different dashboards depending on, on, on the sector. Because obviously, uh, as I said, you know, the emission profile uh, of, of companies across sectors are, are very different. Uh, I might go on to another, uh, yeah, to give you an example of something which is quite different. I'll just share another, another app just to show the, the type so I think, you know, what's interesting at the core of all this is at the end of the day, what we're doing for carbon management is collecting customer data to be able to uh, compute emissions. So, you know, if you're seeing high level like that, it's always it seems simple, right? Collecting customer data. But what's complex in collecting data is uh, it's, it's all about the details again. The details and the details, and so to, to give you the, the different trials that we do in terms of how we can collect the data, uh, this is another example within the app of how we collect supplier data and we uh, push our customers to involve their suppliers because the suppliers are a big part of scope three emissions. And again, that's a big trend of uh, I think building things with retool is that you have different ways of uh, showing user flow. And I think when you start when you start a new product or when you iterate on a product, the, the most important thing is you know trying different user flows and, and you know uh, a kind of getting to what what sticks and what works. And here, for example, so we tried a, a, a you know for, um, in, in you know uh, something different than the other apps that you have seen. Where so so here it's more a step by step. It's a stepper uh, for all your uh, supplier campaign where you can import, so uh, again, you can import uh, uh, your accounting file. Uh, you can add different suppliers if they were not in your accounting files, or you can ask us to generate the, the contacts for these suppliers. You can see, you know, what, and that's, you know, an example of, of you know, the type of experience you can build. So we show the emails that are going to be sent uh, to the supplier of the customers, the different uh, email loops and email reminders. Uh, then we show a preview of the different uh, uh, platform that the supplier will be able to, to access. And you know, so we, we use a lot the, the custom components to be able to embed also 
so I think this is a, a you know some sort of a, a, you know guided demo of, of something else so it's also this flexibility which is super agreeable to be able to uh, include you know if you have something which is not a native component in Ritual, you can embed uh, something which is custom uh, so here for example it's 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 an example where we yeah we embedded a um, uh, some demo, and then we, we show an example of the dashboard you can get. And here, so you can see a different uh, flow, you know, to get our users to, to, to input the data. Um, and so throughout the app, so we, that, that's the type of experiment we conduct a lot. It's uh, we put different screens, we, we try different way of collecting the data, and then we analyze the, the event. So everything that we have plugged in here in Retool is you know, collected into onto segments. And then we compare the results of the different uh, flows to be able to, to select what works best. And if you do that on a ve you know, on, on, on native uh, application, well, you know, it's, it's totally feasible. A lot of companies are doing it, but you, you can't achieve the same uh, speed. Just to, to, to give you maybe that, that will be interesting to everyone here. So, you know, to build this full, uh, uh, this full um, uh, front end, for, for, for this application with all the screens that you see here, uh, being given that the, the backend was already uh, you know, built, uh, so, so the API was already built, it was a one month and a half endeavor. But you know, for these uh, 20, 20, uh, fifth, uh, 25 screens with a lot of, of complex logics. So, so that's the time of, uh, you know, that's the type of, of uh, timing that you can achieve uh, with, with, with a tool. Um, Obviously, super dependent on what you're building. Just, I think, to give you a few other example of, of the type of apps we build and how, you know, with the same supporting backend architecture, we try to build different experience uh, in terms of the data collection. Let me show you maybe the, the type of, of experience we have on finance, which is a specific sector of emissions, just so that you can also compare uh, the type of experience we have. So here uh, it's, okay, just check. I see we have a, a lot of uh, uh, questions. I'll just, uh, so I'll just show two more examples and then maybe we can, we can also take uh, questions and, uh, and we can make it maybe more interactive afterwards. But so, so you know, here it's the same supporting backend. So same uh, uh, backend API allowing you to ingest uh, the data to compute the emissions, etc. But different way of collecting the data. So here, finance, finance. You know, it's a very specific type of emissions, very uh, specific type of data collections. And so we, it's again all retool apps, right? Uh, but it's a different way of collecting the data. So here, you can input all your investments, uh, add them with the year, the number of employees, the attribution factor. Uh, then you can see. The analysis, let me show you the type of analysis we embed uh, within. So you can see, you know, the analysis of your emissions uh, directly and you have a, a table with all the investments. Uh, then you can see your, your, your KPIs. And I think my, my point by that is just that, so it, it's, you know, the same API calls behind, but just the experience is what made sense, you know, for our finance customers. And you can see it's quite different from what you've seen. And I think it's this flexibility that we really needed in our sector, our field, because the, 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 the sector experience is so different from sector to sector. I'll just maybe conclude on a last example, just to show you uh, some cool stuff that you can, can build uh, with, with a tool. And then I think, I suggest we make it interactive, but here is um, an example of a scenario builder that we built again, you know, uh, Retool Lab to be able to, uh, so we have a lot of clients in the food industry. And one of the big question is how can you, you know, how can I take all my menus and how can I see uh, how I could uh, decrease emissions and, you know, the impact in terms of recipes, et cetera. And so here you can see this waterfall chart that take the initial menu. Uh, you have all the different actions that are, you know, the client is looking to implement and the resulting CO2 uh, on the new, new menu. And that's something you can fully parameter uh, through these, uh, these different bugs by adding, you know, different activities. Okay, you know, I want to replace B 
this type of veal by another type of, of veal or you know I want to replace that type of cooking by something which is less energy intensive <coughs> and you can go and and uh, and refine this and again you know the, these these type of apps just to give you a, a rough sense of the orders of magnitude uh, it's uh, it's about half a day you know a day once you have obviously you know the backend API I'm, I'm not talking about the development of the back end API behind, but you know, for the front end experience at least. I would suggest maybe we, because I saw a lot of, of, of questions in, in, in the chats, but maybe that we can open the, the questions or Antonio, I'll let you. Yes, amazing. But too, it's amazing to see just the breadth of applications that you all built. And you said it was a month and a half, which is pretty unbelievable, even in for just retool. Uh, and internal tools as well. I mean, a lot of these apps are, are very complex and also look really polished. So amazing, amazing kind of work on your side. Um, yeah, I did. I did have a new some set of questions here around, you know, how how you think about using Retool as a solution. So one of the questions was kind of builder by culture. Uh, what were the main drivers toward picking Retool as a solution? And then would love to talk to you about how you think about that uh, the software development yeah. process now with using Retool. Yeah. So. You know, I think um, it's it's a very interesting question. So, I, you know, I think at, at the core, so we we're we're scaling uh, very fast, and what we we have two things very important in our culture that decided, you know, us to 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 make this uh, this this move to to go with Rachel. One is that we want everyone to be builders in the company. Uh, that I mean, that's a core value for us. We want to enable uh, everyone in the company to be builders uh, we want everyone you know we want the shortest distance between an idea and uh, you know production <laughs> if I if I would summarize and, and so um, retail really allowed us to do that because you know you have this drag and drop interface if you have a clear API documentation if you have examples that you can duplicate if you have a good set of templates um, Etc. It's very easy to people uh, for people to onboard on that tool, you know, especially engineers. They might not be developers, but you know, a lot, you might have a lot of, of different engineers that you, you can onboard them. And, and then you know, it's it's about what's your uh, focus, what's your core expertise. Uh, you know, to decide if you would build that or, or buy that. I mean, to build such a tool or even a back office today, I think is 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 a mistake to me, right? It, it, except if you have a very specific need, just because it's not the core of your business probably i mean uh except if you're if you're a competitor of, of retail uh but but you know it, it, it's not right it, it's your, your core business for example for us is is computing the emissions right calculating the emissions uh building this logic around emission factors around the data collection it, it's building the right flows i mean really our expertise is about the right flow to to push the customer to to have the right data at the right time and so if you engage in something as complex as building you know a, a uh, a full back office tool with a lot of, uh, or, or even, you know, some sort of interface to allow people internally to build the tools. I mean, it, it's such a big project that you, you're diverting a lot of your energy into it. Uh, so first, it's a question of focus. Right? Awesome. Did you, uh, did you think about restructuring teams in order to support this kind of new way of building tools? How, how is the team kind of organized? You mentioned that you have folks that are more focus on kind of uh, the product facing, customer facing work now, and there's sort of a mix between product folks, but also technical uh, climate specialists. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a very good question because, you know, I think the, um, so what, what we have today is we have a team of product builders who are engineers we recruited, you know, uh, 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 specifically to build these front end experiences. And so they take an objective, right? Such as, uh, let's say, you know, making the customer autonomous on X, Y, Z. And then they would build, you know, iterations of retool apps uh, until, you know, we, uh, we, we, you know, we think the objective is met. Uh, and so the, these people, they, they, they obviously, they work in collaboration with developers, backend developers that would also adjust, you know, make, make adjustments to the, uh, to the API and, and to all the backend system. Um, and, and so it's a cross cross functional team. But what what I think what we believe, though, on top of that, on top of that, you know, immediate distinction is that anybody can 
depending on the level of the variation uh, or, or of the implementation you need to do on retool, uh, a lot of people can be involved. Uh, and that's also the interest, right? You can, uh, you can have engineers that are further from the product team that can make small variations around existing apps uh, if you have built the right structure. And, and with that, you can really deploy uh, um, uh, more, I mean, yeah, more product, uh, um, uh, yeah, more product people within all teams. Yeah, we're, did you have engineers who are reluctant to build on retool versus writing real code? It's kind of part two of, of this question. No, uh, you know, yeah, obviously, you know, you, you have people that that prefer that prefer, um, uh, you know, you, you have different. Uh, uh, likings right uh, among people so you have people that prefer uh, writing uh, complex backend logic you have people that are more uh, builder that like to iterate uh, quickly um, but I, I think at the end of the day what i'm trying to push internally and i'm not saying you know it's necessarily easy it depends also on the culture you have but is that it's not important the tool what is important is the objective and the way you're uh, working you know fast towards it uh, and so you know myself I'm both, you know, I love to, to code in the backend and I love to build on retool. And I think, you know, it, it, it's, they're not one against the other, right? They work together. Uh, so you can, you can, you know, have the impact the, the, the quickest possible and the, and the biggest possible uh, impact. And I find that, you know, uh, uh, you know, super exciting to have, you know, to have computed some sort of super complex backend logic and, you know, in a few hours to be able to display that within a front end experience with retool. So it's, it's really going hand, hand into hand. And I think what you want to put is the joy of building, you know, into the hearts of our engineers. If you, if you, uh, if you will accept my lyrical uh, 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 say. Uh, so which, what kind of results did this actually drive to, to the business? How, how much faster are you able to deliver the tools and, and your product? Yeah. So, you know, typically, uh, you know, something that would take, I mean, we, we at least divided by three, right? The time to, to, to push an experience, a front-end ex, front experience uh, when we made the switch. Um, uh, and, and I think, so So that's just in terms of time between an idea and, you know, the trial of that idea, which is, which is again, key uh, when you want to have fast learnings uh, from your customers. Um, but, but the other thing is just, so that's the time to production uh, KPI. But the other thing is just the time spent on building this experience. I mean, once you have your uh, retool instance set up, you have your theme set up, et cetera, it's also just the time that you spend building these blocks, this front experience is like super quick, right? I, I think we divided, yeah, by almost, uh, uh, I think, you know, it's 50% it's less at least. Uh, but it's probably uh, much more than that. Uh, it, it's really, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it, you have to try it to, to really understand, but this capacity to, to put blocks, you know, right, to connect super easily the logic is really uh, super seamless. Awesome. Um, there's one question about the, the application and, and your product specifically around which parts were retool versus which parts were um, the actual product written in React. Can you touch on how you thought about the split there using retool embed versus kind of maintaining, you know, the, the shell or the outer part of the application using React? Yeah. So uh, right now, everything you saw was, was retool, right? Uh, we still have, uh, so, so we, we uh, you know, that, that, that gives you the, the extent of what you, you can build uh, on, on retool. Uh, so we, we also have uh, parts in React in which we embed Retool, and that's really seamless with the new, I mean, that, that what uh, Anthony uh, described, right? the, 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 the ability to be able to embed seamlessly. Uh, and that's what we do in other experiences for our customers. We embed Retool apps within React um, applications. Uh, it, it's quite easy for us because, you know, we have this direct OAuth 0 SSO connection. So, you know, authentication is like, a no-brainer, uh, you, you know, you have this central or zero authentication. Uh, and so you can just build components that you, you know, include within your React app. And actually, that's what I would advise if you're, you know, starting from a legacy application and you want to try a bit more this way of iterating on front-end experience using the application, I, I would suggest that, you know, uh, have somewhere where you can embed 
uh, applications or experiences or uh, so that you can, you know, try, try this. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you know, if you have an existing way of already authenticating users into an existing product and you want to augment the product's functionality, definitely Retool Embed is, is a great solution here. And, and specifically with Retool Embed, it's, it's not just, you know, if we don't require you to have Auth0 and Identity Provider. Um, in theory, if you have any kind of login, you could actually use that login or use that authentication system to, to give those users access to embedded applications. Uh, but Matthew, maybe what, what are your kind of goals, I guess, moving forward? Um, you know, would you want to maybe rebuild the entire product using Retool, or do you like this kind of split between the two? How do you think of that uh, kind of development? No, so, so our, our goal today is to rebuild everything with, with Retool. Actually, you know, I, I think, uh, and, 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 you know, I, I, uh, obviously, we, we are doing a webinar with Retool, but I must assure you, I'm, huge, I'm a huge fan. And I think, you know, what, one of the strengths of, of Retool is uh, the speed also to which the team delivers. Uh, I mean, we have seen, you know, from the, 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 the start point in time where we, we started to use uh, Retool, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, last August, uh, the, the number of, of, of you know, uh, 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 new features that were released into uh, into real uh, retool is just just impressive, uh, and so uh, you know, and, and I think one 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 thing that is super important is that we are in a field where security uh, is super important, and so what, one key feature of, of retool, I think, if you have the same uh, uh, problematics of customer trust of um, uh, being able to uh, have uh, you know the SOC two certification, etc., is that the Retool Enterprise feature set is just amazing, right? You can we we are so if I describe our setup, it's we are on Retool on premise. Uh, we have SSO with our authentication system. Uh, it's you know we we are using source control through GitHub to deploy our applications, uh, so it's fully versioned. Uh, we you know are using a review process for the PRs. On the applications, they are all protected, uh, and with that, you can also release. You know, only give access to some versions. So it's it's yeah, it's it's uh, it's really fully featured for it's it's enterprise ready. Yeah. Cool. It looks like we're right up time uh, up at time here. Uh, thank you so much, Mathieu. Thanks everyone for for joining. Um, if you have any questions, we'll free, we will definitely follow up and uh, make sure that we can reach back out. Perfect, and thank you for welcoming me. All right, thanks everyone.